Dylan Cortez batting seventh at second base, Ethan Wood, and the eighth shortstop, Lane Williams, batting ninth, third baseman, Devin Gray, on the mound from Randy <laughs> Riley Davis for Concordia. Leading off is second baseman Aaron Gomez. Batting second in left field, Julian Swift. Batting third, right fielder Sean Huber. Batting fourth at first base, Chris Morrow. Batting fifth, the DH Mason Dubois. Batting sixth at short, Brandon Goins. Batting seventh, the catcher EJ Sanchez. Batting eighth, third baseman Matthew Arms. Batting ninth, center fielder Zach Segrist. And on down to the Dorados. Number 10, Otto Frog. All right, so quick turnaround to game two. <clears throat> First game of doubleheader started at 2, and we're at 4.14 p.m. And as you heard Brad Cohn call out the lineup, Amaratos, Jones, and Thompson, 1, 2, 3 for Latorno. Mason Opp, Papman, and Cortez, 4, 5, 6. Wood, Williams, and Graith, 7, 8, 9 against Otto Franz. Tornado's pitcher on the mound. Otto, 4 and 1 with a 3.86 ERA. Six start, six appearance of the year. 25.2 25 innings pit for Otto. 28 hits, 11 runs, all earned. 18 walks and 32 Ks in 25.2 innings. Opposing hitters hitting 277 against Otto. Otto with walk issues early this year, but has <clears throat> kind of brought that into the fold a little bit is count 2 0 here to Otto. Or from Otto to um, Amarantos. Concordia, a exciting 3 2 win in game one today. That pitch in there called strike 2 and 2 to Amarantos leading off here. Same lineup for Letourneau except for the fact that Thompson is in the right. And the left fielder in game one. Cortez is now the DH, a strikeout for Otto Franz. So strikeout looking, one down. So as we were saying, same lineup except for the fact that Cole Thompson was a DH in game one, moves to right field here in game two. Amarantos goes from right to left, and the left fielder in game one, Cortez is the DH. As Jones to the plate, takes ball one. The kind of executive producer Leland Freeman here. Jones two for three in game one with the run scored. <clears throat> Count one and one now. Let's just see everything settling in here. Swing and a miss one and two to Dane Jones. This is a scheduled nine inning ball game. Say hello to Randy Fry who's just checked in. Said the broadcast looking and sounding good. One two. That one popped. On the right side, giving chases Morrow. And out in right field, Sean Huber not able to make the catch. Concordia defense, Swift in left. That's Julian Swift. Zach Sechrist in center. Sean Huber in right. Matthew Arms at third. Brandon Goins at short. A.G. Aaron Gomez at second. Chris Morrow at first. E.J. Sanchez in behind the plate. And Otto Franz after a... Complete game performance by Dakota Palmer on the mound. Boy, I'm, and called strike three for the second consecutive batter. That's two down. That was a nasty pitch. Watch a replay here. Boy, he didn't see it coming. Here's Cole Thompson, the right fielder. He played DH in game one today. He went one for three with a double in RBI. Strike one. Game was tied 1-1 going to the ninth. Concordia had two errors, gave up a run in the top of the seventh. And then the Tornadoes, as they've done, came back and scored two in the bottom of the seventh as this catch will be made by A.G. So one, two, three inning for Concordia. No runs, hits, errors, two strikeouts for Otto. By the way, that game against Howard Payne, ETBU trailed three to one. ETBU scored 11 in the top of the six. They're now playing in the seventh. ETBU leads Howard Payne 12 to three. Ouch. So it looks like ETBU will stay one game ahead of Concordia in the standings. 
Now, Concordia has a chance because they're playing a doubleheader today. ETBU only playing a single game. Can you call up the uh, standings there, Mr. Executive Producer, please? These are the standings coming into today. And what you're going to see is you're going to see that Concordia has the doubleheader today. E uh, ETBU at Howard Payne. That's only a single game. Those two teams will play a doubleheader tomorrow. So ETBU will actually be a half game either ahead or a game and a half ahead of Concordia, depending on what the Tornadoes do here in this game. UMHB at McMurray tonight and Salt Ross State at Howard Harden Simmons tonight. And then, of course, the schedule tomorrow, Concordia single game against Latorno here at noon and double headers throughout the, the broadcast or throughout the rest of the Saturday schedule. And then the Sunday game, UT Dallas and Ozarks at 2 p.m. So Concordia, by the way, will be at Harden Simmons next weekend. Um, we heard from the grandfather of one of the players. I forget who Gabriel was the grandfather of. Get to the email here real quick. Where is it? Gabriel. Yes, the grandfather of Stephen V. Hill will be there with us in Abilene next weekend. As Concordia will come up against Riley Davis. AG leading off against Riley Davis. Davis is six start, two and one with a 7.40 ERA for Riley Davis. Six start, all all appearances have been starts, 20.2 innings pitch, 34 hits, 18 runs, 17 earned in 20.2. He's walked nine, struck out 18. Opposing hitters hitting 362 against Riley Davis. And it's counting out 2-0 to A.G. Takes that one, strike one. It's going to be A.G. Swift and Huber, 1-2-3 for Concordia. Moro, Dubois, uh, Dubois, and Goins, 4-5-6. EJ, Arms, and Segrist, 7-8-9. Count evens up at 2-2 two and two to AG, leading off the bottom of the first here in this nine-inning scheduled ball game. Off-speed, popped in the air. And that'll go out of play on the well-dented rooftop here. Carter Bob. Carter Almarantos in left, Dane Jones in center, Cole Thompson in right for the Latorno Yellow Jackets, Devin Grafe at third, Lane Williams at second, Ethan Wood, I'm sorry, Lane Williams at short, Ethan Wood at second, Kylie Masonov at first, Cameron Papman behind the plate, and Riley Davis on the mound. Yo, Concordia should have a contest is guess how many divots are on the roof. Hmm. 3-2 pitch. Chopper, left side. That's Williams. Throw over to Masonov and one down. Well, let's see. This building is 12 years old, so it was a lot. 6-3 makes it one down. Here's Julian Swift. Swift had a great first game today. Julian was on base all three times. He had a triple run scored, a walk, and a single. So he went two for two. That on-base percentage just skyrocketed after that game one. First pitch on the way. Chop foul strike one. Got a talk, chance to talk to Julian's mom, who said that Julian talked to Coach Carlos, and they found a little hitch in the swing down in Florida. Here's the L1. And that one, a little poke out the center field. That's a base hit. He is three for three. The other thing about Julian that his mom told us is that he didn't like his contacts, so they got him, a, they got went to the eye doctor, new prescription. He's got different contacts, and guess what? That'll He's do three it. for three today. That will do it because he'll throw off your depth perception. There's Sean Huber to the plate. Because his debut, he was first. At bat, he got a hit, so that would do it. If, that would absolutely do it, having bad depth perception. Huber, 231 on the year, 6 for 26, 6 runs scored. He's got a double and 7 RBI. Huber, 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter in game 1 today. That one laced to left field, and that's a base hit. Wow. 
Amarantos really played that badly. That ball almost hit right to him, and he took two sets back and let it drop in front of him. We'll take it, though. Back-to-back -back base hits. No complaints. The There's Chris Morrow. Morrow reached base once. He was 0 for 2 with a hit by pitch. By the way, Concordia with two hits and three batters in this game. They had two hits in six innings in the first game. Mm. So they've done in three batters what they did in six innings in game one today. Bottom line is they won game one. As you see, which is the at second base. Which is the only stat that really matters. At the end of the day, catcher sets up outside. That is Pappen. 0 1, inside pitch fouled off. Count now 0 and 2. Yep, Concordia now 5 and 2 in conference play. 12 and 6 overall. ETBU about to beat Howard Payne in their single game today, so they'll maintain a game lead and then. Depending on what Concordia does here in this game, there'll either be a half game out or a game and a half out. That one skied on the right side, giving chases Mason off, but out of play. <laughs> Howard Payne with a P A I N, says Brad Cohn, not a P A Y N E. Hopefully, there'll be a pain in their side tomorrow for a doubleheader. 0 oh, 2 tomorrow. Swift at second, Hubert first. One down. Mason Dubois on deck. That one chopped to the left side. Flipped the second for one. No chance at first. They'll get the fielder's choice. They'll get 6 4. Hubert erased off the base pass. Swift to third. Second baseman Wood was taking a little bit of a limp there. He's talking to the base umpire. Here's Mason Dubois. He's had a tough year so far. Not getting a lot of at-bats, though. Dubois hitless in his only six games that he's seen so far. Captain Clutch, over 300 last year. 300 lifetime hitter. Maybe it has something to do with his walk-up music. <laughs> <laughs> Strike one to Mason out of Troy, Texas. Played with the Troy, to to Troy to Trojans High School. Yeah, spit it out, 0-2. 0-2. Five 980-pound junior. Troy Aikman, Texas. That's pretty cool. Pitch down low, 1-2 and two to Mason. Troy Trojans, Class 3A High School. Yeah, right. One, two, inside, two and two. Good take there by Mason. So again, not seeing a whole lot of at-bats or playing time. Mason looking to get off the schneid and get Concordia lead here. Wind blowing in straight from left center field. That one a little number to first base and taking it as Masonov and the three unassisted and the inning. Concordia, no runs on two hits. There are no errors and there were two left on. End of one complete. We are nothing, nothing as we go to the top of the second inning.
Box six two in the order of four Laterno, lead off first baseman Kyle. He's in a That one deep to right field. That one going, and it is out of play. Foul ball, strike one by Kyle Mason on. Against Otto Franz. Otto, 12 pitches in the first inning. Struck out two. Got him one, two, three in the first. Yeah, that didn't look like anything but a flare, but that one. Very much wind assisted. Over the right field wall, but foul. Of course, we saw that with Julian's triple in game one today. Yeah, boy, wouldn't that be true? Oh, one. So we miss Owen, oh, too. Otto working quickly. Oh, two. I don't know how you could almost say he was quick pitching him there. One and two. That one fouled off. Email open. Big D Media 2021 at gmail.com. One and two to Masonov. Strike three. Masonov over three in game one. That's the first one swinging for Otto. Number three overall. One down. Bring up Cameron Papman, the catcher. Went 0 for 2 with a walk and run scored. He scored the run in the ninth inning. That gave him the lead. Is that one to right center field? And that one past the diving right fielder, Huber. Nice play by Seacrest to get the throw in. It's still going to be a double, though, for Papman. Here's Dylan Cortez, the DH. He played left field his first game. Cortez 0 for 3. Robbed on a great play by Julian Swift in game one. That one off the plate, ball one. Concordia defense. Swift, Segrist, and Huber left to right in the outfield. Arms, Goins, A.G. Morrow, third to first. E.J. behind the plate. And Otto. 1-0 pitch here. In there, caught strike one and one. That one chopped foul. One and two. Really? Wow. One, two, high two and two. You actually, you can actually hear the wind mm -hmm. in the uh, crowd mics. We have set up. Off speed, that one to the shortstop, Goins. Throws the second and they've got the runner. Nice job. Good job by Goins and AG. Fielder's choice goes 6 4. They get the lead runner, Papman, at second and two down. Wow. How about that? Smart fielder's <clears throat> choice. And bad base running by Papman. <clears throat> that one pop foul, strike one. I was going to say Ethan Smart Woods at the plate. Cortez get a second shot, is that it? <laughs> oh, one. That one a little flare to right field. That's going to be in front of Segrist, but holding up at second smartly is Cortez. Nice play by Zachman. So two hits in the inning. Jacket shortstop, Lane Williams. 
Lane Williams to the plate. Williams drove in the go-ahead run in the seventh. He went one for three with the RBI single. That was in game one. That pitch out the plate, ball one. Number eight hitter in the lineup. For Letourneau. Swing and a miss. One and one. <clears throat> 12 to four, ETBU leads Howard Payne going into the eighth inning. 11 run, sixth inning for ETBU. And that's on the road. Here's a one, one. Blocked by EJ there, two and one. Swing and a miss. Two and two. <clears throat> two, two with two down. Oof. Three and two. What dirt? There is no dirt. The faux dirt. Cortez at second, Wood at first. That one fouled off. So pitch number seven of the at bat coming up. Same two teams tomorrow for the series closer at noon right here. Gardner Boxfield. That one fouled off as well. As we are in spring break, and this doubleheader scheduled a long time ago. Tell that to the weather. Don't get me going about Mother Nature. Three, two. That one, a little number past the pitcher. AG over to Morrow, and the four, three ends the inning. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two left. And about a inning and a half, we have no score here from Gardner Box Field on the Big Daddy Media Network. Uh, the second six seven eight two tornado is here to push out Brandon Goins. Goins at the plate as Brad said, six seven eight, strike one to Brandon. That one off the plate. <coughs> One and one. Brandon earlier today, one for three. When Concordia was trailing by one with one out in the seventh, he had a single stole second and came around to score the tying run. As Concordia went on to win three to two, scoring two in the bottom of the seventh. We're now two, two to 
two and one now count. Chopper, third, and safe. Infield hit, hit number three for Concordia. As EJ to the plate. EJ first at bat of the series. Throw to first base, runner back on ball one to EJ. <clears throat> EJ comes into the game hitting 237. He's nine for 38 in 13 games. Six runs scored. He's got a double and three RBI. For the Gateway Prep graduate out of Georgetown. And bunts that one foul. Say hello to his mom, Jamie. Tuned in. One and one. EJ, six footer, 205 junior out of G Town. And time called. EJ squaring the bunt again. Pulls a bat back, swinging a miss, throw down the second base. <clears throat> and Goins is caught stealing by a mile. <clears throat> so Papin throws him out. A little bit of an awkward lead and run. Count one and two to EJ. And they got him. Strikeout number one for Riley Davis. Two down here in the second. Here's Matthew Arms to the plate. Arms earlier today hitting the two hole. He went 0 for 2 with a walk. Lefty. Looks at ball one. Matthew Arns, 5'7", 180-pound junior out of Waco. So how much of a morale breaker is it for the batter when the lead runner's caught stealing? Well, especially when you're supposed to hit and run and you leave him hanging? Yeah. Yeah. Batter more than likely makes an out. That one chopped left side, and that's going to be a base hit. Infield hit for Arms. Second hit of the inning, fourth hit of the game. I mean, how big is that caught stealing now? There's Zach Segrist. Zach Man had the two RBI, including the game winner in the bottom of the seventh. As he went two for two, two singles, two RBI, has 13 on the year, leads the team in RBI. Also had a sacrifice in between the two hits. Is that one way outside ball one? Zach Mann, six foot, 192 pound sophomore out of Beaumont. Runner arms. So we're going to miss one and one. Arns with about a three-step lead. He's got one foot past the point over at first base. Not much of a lead. That one, a little flare to right field for base hit. Arms is going to have to hold up. And Secrets is three for three on the day. A poke to right field. And now how big is that caught stealing? I was about ready to say the same thing. As AG to the plate, bounce out 6-3 the first time up. And considering it was Goins on base, he probably would have scored on that base hit the right field. So two outs, AG leadoff hitter to the plate. 
Larry Erickson, Gabriel Sita. Hope you all are watching. Our emailers from game one. But down the third baseline foul. Strike one by A.G. Yeah. Concordia with five hits out of nine batters. And yet a zero on the scoreboard. AG takes that side ball, one and one. Julian Swift, who has one of those hits and is three hits today as well on deck. Is that one fouled off? One and two. Oof, it was a good pitch. Called ball, two and two. Two, two, I'm fouled off. Kind of holds a two and two. As you look at the base runner. That one fly down the left side, and that will fall and foul. You were saying? As you look at the base runner on first, he was well past the point, as you were pointing out in game one. Game one. Good yep. foot past the point. Pitch number 40. Wow, 40 pitches. Seventh pitch of this at bat coming up. This will be pitch number 41 for Riley Davis, thanks to Vance Laws, and that one's going to be fouled off. Yeah, Zach Mann, the trail runner, as Leland said, good lead. Of course, the first baseman playing behind him. <clears throat> He's got both feet past the point at first. See on the right side of your screen. There you go. Single strikeout, caught stealing, single, single. AG lines it down the left side, and that one is drifting foul. So the foul ball guy, A.G., has fouled off four in a row. Continues with a 2-2 count here. Arms at second, Segrist to first. As you can see on the right side again, real quick. Segrist, plenty of space with the first baseman playing behind him. 2-2, fouled off again. And the battle continues. Pitch number 10 of the at bat. And that's a foul ball. Count holds it two and two. Here in the second, two runners on, two out. Deuces wild. Outside, three and two. Pitch number 12, the event. <laughs> Chopper right side, first baseman Masonov. That was a long at bat, three and assisted Concordia. No runs on three hits. They leave two, they've left four on. At the end of two, we have no score.
Devin Great to the plate. 9 1 2 for Latourneau. Strike one to Grafe. What's the pitch count contrast between Otto and Riley? That was 34 for Otto, says Vance Laws. It's one and two, or one for three for Grafe in game one earlier today. One and one now. Oh, and that hits him. First hit batsman of the day by Concordia Pitchers. In fact, they've only had two. Auto here and complete game victory by Dakota Palmer in game one. Congratulations to Christy. Tuned into the broadcast. And that was Dakota's second complete game victory in a row. Carter Amarantos. He struck out looking his first time up. Ball one. Three base runners through the first nine hitters for Latorno. That one chopper could be two. Oh, man. Goins bobbled it, got the out at second. Fielder's choice will go six to four. Amarantos at first as Grafe erased at second on the fielder's choice. Shortstops for Concordia are having a bit of a trouble this game. We need a shortstop. God, that error in the seventh, just brutal. First pitch swing and foul off. Strike one by Dane Jones, who had a great game one. Jones two for three with two singles and a run scored in game one. Struck out looking his first time up. Amarantos at first, one down. Nice pitch by Otto there on the outside, 0-2. Throw to first base, runner back. That one high. One and two. Email open. Big D Media 2021 at gmail.com. Heard from Larry Erickson and Gabriel Sita. Gabriel, I hope I'm pronouncing that right in game one. That one fouled off. Ouch. By Dane Jones. Talked about Latorno. Eight and ten coming into the day today. As a team, they were hitting 290 after 18 games. They had 20 home runs, 110 RBI. On base of 377, slugging of 449. On the base pass, 60 of 72. Man, they swipe a lot. They've got four guys in double digits in steals. Haven't seen a whole lot of that today, though. Concordia pitching is held in check. Concordia defense almost gave away the first game today, but came back because that one fouled off. One and two, you hear the wind in the crowd. Mike is executive producer. Leland Freeman pointed out earlier. Let me get you, get, get you those gusts. There you go. One, two, fouled off. Seventh pitch of the bat coming up. Jones has fouled off three pitches at this point. What'd you say, B? 17 mile an hour gusts. Okay. 10 mile an hour sustained. Oh, and they got him picked off. Throw down the second. The second 1 3 4 pickoff of the day for Concordia. Wow. Goodness gracious. That's the second time today Concordia has done that. Yep, somebody's not reading something right. Devin Grafe was the victim the first time, and Otto finishes off with his fourth strike out of the game. So they get two runners on with a hit by pitch and a fielder's choice, but a pickoff and a strikeout. And like what we discussed earlier, that killed the morale of the batter with the failed uh, pick, with the failed uh, stealing of the base. And there you go. So we are through two and a half. 
no score. Concordia and Latorno on the Big Daddy Media Network here at Gardner Boggs Field. Julian Swift to the plate, one for one today, or in this game, he is three for three, and bobbled by the shortstop. Yeah, base hit. Julian Swift is four for four in two games. That one off the shortstop's glove. Nice try there by Lane Williams. You know, it, yeah, go ahead. Funny story is, I, is I saw Julian before the game, sitting up the outfield camera. And he says hello to me. I go, I go, hey, Julian. He's like, your, your on-base percentage is, is amazing. So I guess, you know, that was before today's game, but he's now living up to it, so maybe it was a motivational speak. I'll take credit for that. I pitch out the plate, ball one. Whatever it is, man, it's working. Been on base five times, four hits and a walk. Let's see, let me double check that. Yep, four hits and a walk. Five for five on base percentage. He's got one foot right at the point at first base. Square to bunt. That one off the plate, 2-0. and oh. Hey, if it was just his contact lenses, that makes perfect sense. Well, and he got some tips from Carlos as well, Coach Carlos Perez down in Florida. So combination has worked out well. Squares the butt and pots it in the air, and that'll be against the fence fouls. Two and one. Against the backstop, <clears throat> the netting. Two and one. Wind blowing in from left center field. Squares the bun, puts it down, and it's going to roll foul. <clears throat> Hit the crease right on the faux grass. And a pop foul, two and two now to Sean Huber. Huber had a base hit his first time up. <clears throat> That's it. <clears throat> Concordia, by the way, has sent now 12 batters to the plate. They've got six hits and no runs. Yeah, hitting 500. That one popped foul on the right side. That'll drift out of play. Swift and Huber, two hits in the first. Goins a hit in the second. Caught stealing, and then back-to-back -back hits by Arms and Segrist. And now Swift here leading off the third. 2-2. Two -two. Out to plate, full count. So pitch number seven to the back coming up. <clears throat> this is three and two. And Davis already over 50 pitches. In fact, he's at 54. Exactly. And ball four. First walk. Give it up. And this is a scheduled nine-inning game. Yep. Here's Morrow. Bounce out. Fielder's choice. Reach base on the fielder's choice, actually. And if you look at the flag, once again, the wind is playing games with the batters. It's either going straight towards home plate or it's going towards right field. 
Morrow's due for an RBI. Puts it down foul, strike one. <clears throat> How old is the current turf? Two years old. First one went 11. Mason Dubois on deck. Bunts it, and that's going to be popped and just out of the reach of the catcher, Papman. <clears throat> Here's a suggestion. Don't bunt him again, please. Wow. Tomorrow, of course, hitting cleanup. Not expected to bunt on a regular basis. <clears throat> Randy Fry checking in. Thank you, Randy. Rock and Rev. Yeah, please. O2 popped in the air. Papman with the catch one down. So pop foul to the catcher for Mora, one down. Here's Mason Dubois. Bounce out three and assisted in inning number one. What is with his. Mason pops foul, strike one. Swift at fur or second, Hubert first, one down. Concordia looking to take an early lead here. <clears throat> oh, and two now to Mason. Oh, two. That one little loop out the right center field. Center fielder will make the grab. Mm. Mm. Two down. That one just had too much air under it. It's probably wind assisted. Brandon Goins to the plate. Davis up over 60 pitches now. And we're getting a little consultation here. Paul Phillips in his first year with Latorno talking to the home plate umpire. Probably something Brad Cohn said. Yep, yeah, see, they're going to call the base umpire. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. They're going to have to throw Brad Cohn out of the uh, press box again. How many ejections you got lifetime? Three or four? 400. <laughs> Tell you what, this is interesting to see what this is about. They got the out. Uh, okay. I have no idea what that was about. Remains first and second with two down and Goins. One for one with an infield single and then caught stealing to the plate. That one off the plate, ball one. 20 years ago, Mongo McMichael got ejected from Wrigley Field for criticizing the refs during the 10th uh, inning stretch. One of the Goins fouled off, one and one. EJ Sanchez on deck. Off speed fouled off right at the dugout, one and two now to Goins. Inning started with a base hit by Swift, a walk to Huber. 
Since then, a pop foul to the catcher and a fly out the center. Scheduled nine inning ball game here. All speed fouled off. <clears throat> yeah, right? He's like, EJ's like, dude, seriously, come on. That one off speed outside, two and two now to Brandon Goins. Two, two, got him. So Concordia puts two runners on with nobody out and they waste two. They waste a hit and a walk, no errors. At the end of three complete, we have no score. Fourth now, three, four, five, doing the order for the Yellow Jackets, leading off right fielder, Cole Thompson. Cole Thompson leads off for the Yellow Jackets here at the top of the fourth inning of this two-game doubleheader here on the Big Daddy Media Network. Leland Freeman, Chuck Licata had to step away shortly, but he'll be back before you know it. And that is hit to the shortstop. Six to three. Chris Morrow for the out of curve. By Chris Morrow. So one away for Otto Franz, who entered the inning with 44 pitches. Otto so far has only given up two hits as Kyle Masonoff is now a bat for Letourneau. And that was inside. It's sharply to the third baseman. For the out, two away. Matthew, Matthew Arms throws to Morrow. So that is two away for Otto Franz. And his catcher, Cameron Pfaffman, now comes to plate. He's one for one of a hit. That's 0-1 to Franz. He started all three hitters 0-1. 1-1's one one. One now the count. Hit foul. One and two's the count. With two outs here on the top of the fourth inning. Two and two is the count. High and outside.
First base umpires call it strike three. So that's a one, two, three inning for Otto Franz. As we head to the bottom of the fourth here on the Big Daddy Media Network and the score nothing, nothing on this second game of a two game doubleheader uh, with Laterno, Laterno versus the Concordia Tornadoes. Back shortly after this. E.J. Sanchez leads off the bottom of the fourth inning for the Tornadoes. He is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. As Riley Davis comes back to the mound with 66 pitches, so that was 67 for the strike. Letourneau has given up six hits, but no runs thus far to the Tornadoes. Popped up. And that was an easy play for, for Kyle Masonoff. One away for the Tornadoes. As Matthew Arms now comes to the plate. One for one with a hit. That was low for ball one. Low and outside, 2-0 and oh to arms. Hit sharply into right field, and that's a, that's a single for Matthew Arms. He's now two for two. As Zach Segrist now comes to the plate for the Tornadoes. He's one for one. That is seven hits for the Tornadoes, and so far no runs. As Chuck over here, as Chuck Lacan makes it back to the press box. And that is, uh, that was actually ball for Segrist, so it's 1-0 is the count. Fouled off, 1-1 one one's the count. His Letourneau starting pitcher, Riley Davis, now at 71 pitches for the day. And they do have someone in the bullpen. Thank you, Brad. Two and one is the count. As you can see, Arms is right on the point with the leadoff run. That was way outside. Now three and one to Segrist. As he shows great play, uh, plate discipline. See if he draws the walk. Pop. 
popped up right field. And that's a can of corn. So two outs. Thompson makes the catch. Second baseman Aaron Gomez. Alright, two at bats for today. <laughs> Chopper foul for strike one. That's a slow roller to the shortstop for the out. So no runs a hit, runners stranded as we head to the top of the fifth inning. All knotted up at zero here on the Big Daddy Media Network. And as you can see, our email, bigdmedia2021 at gmail.com. Email us, and we'll uh, say your message on the air. As Dylan Cortez is at the plate, all in one for the day. One and two is the count. And struck him out. That's 58 pitch count, 58 pitches for the day for Otto Franz with six strikeouts so far. Here on this top of the sixth inning here on the Big Daddy Media Network. As Ethan Wood comes to play, he's one for one a hit. One of those, the count to Wood. That's just down the outside corner for a strike. So one of one's the count to Wood. That's a slow roller to the second second base for the out. So Gomez to Huber. Or Gomez to Morrow for the out. Two away for Frodo Franz. As Rock and Randy Fry. QA for today's game is check in. Says all is well. As Lane Williams tapped one the third for out number three. Matthew Arms to Chris Morrow. So that's a one, two, three inning for Otto Franz as we head to the bottom of the six here on the Big Daddy Media Network.
All right, two, three, four for Concordia. Swift two for two in this game. Swift is four for four with a walk on the day. Phenomenal game for the Cedar Park product so far. <clears throat> Chutlick got it, take it over for Leland Freeman. Thank you, Leland, for helping out. Swift single in the first, single in the third. Reached third in the first, did not score. Another pipe ball one. Boy, that was a stretch by Papman trying to get that in the strike zone. Jeez. We saw that up here. Come on! I'm fouled off as we play here. Bottom of the fifth, no score. 0-2-0 zero, zero, Latorto. Here's what should disgust you. 0-7-0 zero, oh, Concordia. Last game, they had two hits through six innings. Scored the two winning runs in the seventh. That one popped between right center field. Julian is on again. This one all the way to the wall. He's going to go for three. He's going to make it. Look at Julian Swift and what a game he's having. He's got three hits in this game. Had two early. He's got two triples on the day. So a little chat with Carlos and some eye adjustments. And Julian Swift is on a tear. Here's Sean Huber. One for one with a walk. And we're going to have a little discussion at the mound here. So Julian at, sec at third base for the second time this game, this time with no outs. Huber, Morrow, and Dubois with a chance to bring him in. Exactly. Scored one, the only run for Concordia in the first six innings in game one today. That one slap, right center field. That's a base hit, and Julian's going to come in. Huber on his way to second, and he's going to go for three. I don't know what the center fielder, Dane Jones, was doing. He was raised his arms up like the ball was trapped underneath the fence, but this, ain't fin this is not Wrigley Field where you lose the ball in the ivy. So back-to-back -back triples for Concordia, and they're finally on the board, one nothing. Interesting call by Dane Jones. He lifted his arms up as Huber was on his way to second. Didn't matter, Huber to third, just kept running. Chris Morrow, first pitch foul ball, reached on the fielder's choice, pop foul to the catcher. 0 for 2, Concordia now one run on nine hits. Well, at least they're hitting the ball, right? <laughs> Little poke to the left side. Third baseman. And that's in foul territory. Devin Grafe lost it. Fortunate for him, that was in foul territory. Morrow trying to live up to his name, RBI guy. Been a while. Infield in for the Yellow Jackets. 0-2. Chopper right side. That'll do it. 
Masonov with the three and assisted, but the RBI for Moro. That's his 12th of the year, and Concordia goes up 2 nothing. Huber comes in to score. So back-to-back -back triples. And a bounce out, three and assisted. One down, nobody on. And Mason Dubois. Mason 0 for 2, bounce out 3 and assisted, flight out the center. Take strike 1 there. Oh one, 1, down low, 1 and 1. That one right back to the box. <clears throat> one three makes it two down. Davis on the play there, two down. Goins one for two, single stolen base and strikeout. Goins to the plate. Two down, nobody on. Two in for Concordia. Bunts at foul, strike one. Yeah, Tornado's having problems bunting the ball in this game especially. Going fouled off and quickly 0-2 to Goins. Davis up above 90 pitches now, and he's in the fifth inning. Give up the two runs on nine hits, one walk and two strikeouts. Off-speed pop foul, right side. No one out of play. <clears throat> right. That one fouled out of play. That one rocketed down the left field line foul. Oh, and two fouled off again. Off speed fouled off. So Goins hanging in at 0 2. That one popped in the air. Right side, second baseman calling for it. That's Wood, and he makes the grab. But Concordia comes up with two runs on two more hits. There were two triples, there were no errors, and there was no one left. And a five complete. Tornadoes now with a two nothing lead. Here on the Big Daddy Media Network.
9-1-2 for the Yellow Jackets here in the top of the six. Otto Franz, a great outing so far. Five innings pitch, two hits, no runs, no walks, six strikeouts. Great hit by pitches first time up. That pitch high, two and one. Otto was six Ks. He's retired seven in a row. That one lifted to left field. Coming in, Julian Swift. The diving grab, Julian Swift. Oh, my goodness. We may be seeing the birth of a long-time Concordia great player, Julian Swift, really turning it on. His second great defensive catch of the day, one down. Wow. Wow. If there was a player of the game award, it would go definitely to him today. Player of the day. Player of the day. Yeah. That one poked out the center field, Segrist. And that one between AG and Segrist for a base hit. Amarantos with a base hit. His second time to reach base. Only the third hit off of... Otto Franz. Dane Jones struck out twice so far. Takes outside ball one. Goodness gracious. Julian turning it on today. Two triples on the day. He's five for five with a walk. He's cranking it out. Win back to going left to right. The center field flag straight up. That one high two and one now to Jones. Boy, and with that single by Amarantos, how big is that play by Julian to keep the runner off? Nice pitch by Otto. Oh, that's a knee buckler right there, two and two. Zero three zero Lactorno, two nine oh Concordia. Two two. Chopper third. Over to the second for one. The first. Nice play. Double dip. Five, four, three. Nice play by Arms. Throws over to AG tomorrow. And a great defensive inning for the Tornadoes. A great play by Julian. Followed by a five, four, three double dip. No runs. One hit. No errors and none left on after the 5-4-3. We go bottom of the sixth. Tornadoes with the momentum tr leading it 2 to nothing. So new pitcher for the Yellow Jackets, Will Pod Sednick comes in. Freshman pitcher out of Bedford, went to L.D. Bell High School up in the Dallas area. 5'11", 160-pound freshman, Pod Sednick takes over for Riley Davis. 
Davis threw a whole lot of pitches. Pretty close. Let's find out here. 97. Went five innings. Gave up the two runs on nine hits. One walk, two strikeouts. <clears throat> so Pod Sedna comes in trailing 2 0. As Concordia will send up EJ Arms and Segris, 7 8 9. Bottom of the sixth now, 7 8 9. EJ, 0 for 2. Struck out swinging in the second. Popped to the first baseman in the fourth. Curveball in there called strike one to EJ. Say hello to Jamie, his mother. On the broadcast, email open. Big D Media 2021 at Gmail. That one popped in the air right side. Second baseman lost it. Ethan Wood, right fielder, comes in though. And Cole Thompson makes the grab one down. Cole Thompson. If you look at this cam, it's basically it went from mostly cloudy overcast yeah, to, pra right? to practically clear. Just a few cirrus clouds out there, but this is sun's right in the player's face. <laughs> Randy Fry. God. Arms to the play. He's been on base twice with two singles. Arms two for two. Wraps that one to the first baseman, though, and Masonov with the easy three and assisted. Three pitches, two down. Here's Segrist, one for two. Segrist with a single poke to right field in the second, fly out to right in the fourth. Randy Fry is saying, I just wish Chuck would put a little more energy in his voice at times. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, right? <clears throat> Rock and rev, Randy Fry. That one fouled off, strike one. You know, Rock and rev, if we stuck him right below the Starship launch pad in Boca Chica, he would probably think that's quiet. Yeah, it's like, I thought, you'll probably say, I thought this thing was loud. I go, mm -hmm. well, you know, he's old. The you biggest know. rocket ever made, you know, that kind of thing. He's old. So are we. Yeah, you. That one <laughs> lifted the right center field. Going on the run. That's in for a hit. Segrist on his way to second. That would be a stand-up double with two outs. Segrist is second hit of the game. Third extra base hit for Concordia in this game. <clears throat> Tornadoes with two triples and now a double. And that's just in the last inning and a half. Top the order <clears throat> Zach Seacrest with four hits on the day. Three three singles, two RBI, and a double. It's top of the order AG who's got need to get untracked here. He is 0 for 3 in this game. He takes ball one. AG earlier today was 0 for 2. Reaching base on a hit by pitch. So 0 for his last five. And we're getting a warning to the bench of Latorno. I'm not sure what Randy Fry said, but obviously it wasn't good. So if, if the bench has another infraction, what is the penalty on the team? There you go, one and one. <laughs> Brad said 15 yards in a first down. That makes sense, right? Automatic first down, by the way. Not just the first down, but automatic first down. So if it's fourth and 20, you're screwed. One, one, AG. So you're going to strike two, one, and two now. Play here in the sixth of a scheduled nine inning ball game. Concordia with two spot in the fifth. That's been it so far, although they've had 10 hits. Including a double here with two down by Segrist. He stands at second. And AG out on strikes. He is 0 for 4. Concordia wastes a double. Fourth runner left on base. No runs a hit. No errors and one left on. We are through six complete. And we have a 2-0 lead for Concordia after six. Did you want to say something? Not now. You sure? Yeah, because uh, I don't want to jinx the uh, Concordia. How's that sound? There you go.
Heart of the order for Yellow Jackets, 3-4-5. Thompson, 0 for 2. Popped out the second. <clears throat> Bounce out 6-3. Otto Franz at 73 pitches through 6. Three hits, no runs, no walks, six strikeouts. Count 2-0. and As we play here in the seventh. That one to the right side. A.G. off the carpet. Over to Chris Morrow, one down. Swift in left, Segrist in center, Huber in right. Arms at third, Goins at short, A.G. at second, Morrow at first, E.J. behind the plate. And Otto with one down here in the seventh. Kyle Mason off. And that one little blue hit the left field. There's one that Julian can't catch, unfortunately. Is he really Mason Oss from Vandegrift? Wow. No wonder why his granddad could be here for his birthday. Cameron Pappen has a double. He has one of four hits. Pops that one to the right side. Morrow watching as Huber gives chase. And that one just out of the ballpark. Strike one. Pappen double. A race on a fielder's choice. And then struck out in the fourth. Randy Fry says, all is bueno. Randy, just remember, I'm as old as you are. I pitch high one and one. So when I call you old, I'm calling myself old. Nothing is really bueno. <laughs> high two and one. No taco bueno? I was thinking the same thing. Hmm. What? Taco Bueno. There you go. Two and two. Well, if Concordia gets two complete game victories, then Brad's buying it, Taco Bueno. Don't jinx it. Two, two. Not the plate. Three and two. No, you don't jinx it when you say somebody's going to buy if this happens. There's a distinct jinxation on that. Do you like that word? Jinx A for, for the person that's going to buy? <laughs> first walk by Otto. Runners at first and second now. How's our bullpen look? <clears throat> Dylan Cortez, and yes, we're going to have a trip to the mound. We'll get you the bullpen cam here in just a second. And we do have somebody up in the bullpen. My guess is it's going to be it's a right-hander. It is. It could be V Hill. There's another there's actually two guys. Oh, there's a lefty up too, okay. Righty and the lefty you can see right there in the bullpen. Thanks to Matt Mater, by the way, for getting us access to these wonderful angles that we would never have access to. Noah Kelly's probably in there somewhere. Of course, again, when you get the, the Dakota Palmer first game, complete game, you got a lot of arms to go to here in game two. It's a good thing, too, because Vance Laws has player eligibility, but you don't want to go to Vance. Dylan Cortez reached base once. That one gets away from EJ. That's going to be a pass ball. Over to third is Masonov. Papman to second. That's not a good sign with just one down. Yep. Takes away a double play and puts the tying run at second base with one down. Swing to miss there. One and one. Cortez trying to put his team in front with that swing. That one chopped foul, one and two. So Otto coming back after a ball. Got two quick strikes. Julian Segrist, Sean, outfield. 
Matthew, Brandon, A.G., Morrow, third to first. E.J. behind the plate. One, two. Fouled off. Auto thrown really well. He's up to 87 pitches through six. He's got the six Ks. He's got three of them looking. One, two. I'm a powered foul on the left side. And that'll be into the Williams Family Clubhouse. Pitch number six of the bat coming up. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Williams family with exclusivity over there. That one little poke foul. Four straight foul balls. So one and two still. Down low, two and two. That's now seven pitches, eighth pitch of the bat coming up to Cortez, who's over two with a strikeout. Got him! And the tag out by the catcher. Strikeout number seven for Otto Franz. Two unassisted on the tag. Two down. Brings up Ethan Wood. Wood is one for two. Single in the second. Bounce out four three in the fifth. Infielders can play back now. Mason off at third. Pappen at second. Nice pitch in there. Strike one to win the right-handed hitting catcher. On one. Wind still blowing left to right. You can see in the flag in the left center field shot. No one misses inside one on one. Getting a little bit chillier out there. Everybody kind of bundling up as the sun leaving the stands here. At Gardner Boggs Field. Hmm. <clears throat> Overthrew that off speed. Two and one. As Brad said, just got to get the batter. AG in short right field on the right side. Morrow back as well. There's a called strike two and two. And Wood not exactly happy with that call. Said to the umpire, what would Brad Cohn call on that one? Here's a 2-2. Two -two. Just missed. Full count now to Ethan Wood. Lane Williams on deck. He's the number eight hitter in the lineup. He is 0 for 2. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'd like to have him lead off the next inning. And there it is, ball four. So second walk of the inning, second walk of the game, as you bring up a guy now who's bounced out 4-3 and bounced out 5-3. So Masonov at third, Papman at second, Wood at first, Williams the number eight hitter to the plate. Let's see, he's gone 4 3, 5 3. How about a 6 3? Pops it in the air. AG can't find it as that one way out the right field. And the catch out to right. Huber with the catch. So they load the bases on a hit and two walks. They leave three. As we go to the bottom of the seventh, up two to nothing.
before, here's Julian Swift. Julian Swift is five for five with a walk in six plate appearances on this day. He tripled in the fifth, ignited a two-run inning. He's also got two other singles today in this game. Earlier game, he went two for two with a walk. He's got three of his team's ten hits. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Julian. Chopper, left side, third baseman picks it up. Nice stretch over there by Masonov. Nice play, bang, bang, 5-3, makes it one down. They finally get Julian out, just barely. I bring up Sean Huber, been on base three times. RBI triple to bring in Julian in the fifth. He scored later in the inning, also walked in singled. Concordia looking forward to the return of Landon Hyde as he has been out with an injury, strike one. The gunner, the rifleman, whatever you want to call it. He were doing well in the three hole today in this game. Almost hit him. Looked like it hit him. Ball one and one. Email's been unusually quiet today. Of course, a lot of folks here, which is great. Wow. That one just a bit high, said Bob Euchre. Two and one. That one little loop right to the shortstop. Williams with the catch, two down. Here's Morrow to the plate. And Concordia in danger of going one, two, three for the first time in this game. So hopefully that was the reverse media jinx there. First baseman, Chris Morrow. I don't pop foul, strike one. We won't tell you why, but if they go one, two, three, we're blaming Brad. <clears throat> That's okay. I took, I took the blame for the walk by Dakota. That one fouled off. That one, too. Fifty-eight degrees now. Ooh, balmy fifty-eight. To the right side. Foul ball. No one two. Yeah, right. Would have been a foot race, and I have a feeling that Mora would have won that one. Mm-hmm. Foul tip into the catcher's mitt. Still 0-2 tomorrow. <laughs> One and two. Boy, if anybody's going to benefit from this wind blowing left to right, you figured it would be this guy. To the right side, and that one off the first baseman. And that's going to be a hit. 
So first hit of the day for Morrow with two down. Mason Dubois, 0 for 3, looking to crack something here. He is well overdue now. Third infield single in this game, interesting. Take strike one, does Mason. Mm-mm. Oh, and one Mason Dubois. Play here in the seventh, Concordia with a 2-0 lead on 11 hits. They had no problem with hits in this game, just problem scoring. They had problems hitting last game. Came out with a two-spot trailing 2-1 two to one in the bottom of the seventh. 1-1 one one to Mason. Chopper left side. Fair. Grabbed by the third baseman. It's fair. And the 5-3 ends the inning. So Concordia gets a hit. They leave one. No errors. At the end of seven complete, it is 2-0. Grafe hit by pitch in the third and then robbed on a extensive diving play by Julian Swift in the sixth. So officially 0 for 1 as he leads off here in the top of the eighth against Otto Franz. Gone all the way so far. Count 1 and 1 here. Show him the bullpen. Thank you, sir. We got a lefty up in the bullpen. Thank you, Leland. 1-1 one, one in there called strike one and two now to Grafe. Otto now up over 100 pitches. He's gone seven plus, four hits, no runs, two walks, seven strikeouts. Make that eight strikeouts, one down. Another strikeout for Otto They have left five on base, have the Yellow Jackets. And through 14 plus innings, Concordia has thrown two pitchers. Amarantos to the plate. He's been on base twice, single and fielder's choice. That one will poke to right field, and that will be a base hit. Amarantos, second consecutive base hits. That's five hits now for the Yellow Jackets. 0 5 0. Latorno, 2-11-0 Concordia. Here's Dane Jones hitless in this game. He went two for three earlier today. Dane's last last time up, Jones hit into 5-4-3 double play. That would work. That would work. Yeah, that's what Brad says. Ball one. We could do that again because the same guy that was on first for that one is on first for this one. Somebody alert Matthew Arms. 
Nope, not going to happen. That one, deep center field. Seagrass back, back, and makes the catch. The Zach man. Two down. I'm not sure if he lost in the sun or got a bad start, but able to make the catch, two down. And with favorable win, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good point. Cole Thompson 0 for 3. Thompson was the DH earlier today, had the go-ahead RBI in game one. Now, what's the uh, the rule if it hits the batter's eye? If it hits the batter's eye, I believe it's a home run. If it hits the batter's eye in center field. Yeah, I think that's, a home run. that's a home run. That one, base hit the left field. Thompson is first hit in this game. Six hits now. As Kyle Mason off, one for three. Let's see the bullpen again real quick. Please. Okay, so the lefty that was up, up, and that's why you got an empty bullpen because we have a change of pitchers. 108 pitches. Yep. He's going to get a huge ovation. Yep. Seven and two-thirds innings. The starters for Concordia have just thrown an absolute clinic today. Both Otto Franz and Dakota Palmer. I believe this is Noah Kelly. No, that's Stephen V. Hill. All right, so Stephen V. Hill in. Boy, this guy has been a monster for Concordia this year. Steven on the year. Want to know, a, this is a um, misleading 6.75 ERA. He's given up 12 runs in 12 innings, 9 earned, 19 hits against him, 2 walks, 15 strikeouts. But he has been on point as of late. He's 1-0. This is his seventh appearance all in relief. Okay, show me the bullpen again real quick. I'm wondering if Kelly's going to get up now. Now that V-Hill's out. Please and thank you. Nope, nobody in the bullpen at the moment. So let's see if V-Hill can get four outs. He's got two outs here with runners at first and second. Amarantos at second, Thompson at first. And a cleanup hitter, Masonoff, who's one for three, a singles last time up to the plate. Former Vandegrift Viper to the plate. First baseman, Kyle Masonoff. V Hill, 6 foot, 220 pounds. Senior. Out of Georgetown, 0 and 1 to Masonoff. Runners going and stolen base. I'm not sure. I didn't see the call. Oh and two. There we go. Oh and two. Yep, absolutely. Almorado sits third. Thompson at second. I'm a Pop foul. Trying to get him on an off speed pitch. V Hill focusing on the batter now. Two hits in the inning. Six overall for the Yellow Jackets. Not sure what you're arguing on a foul ball, but okay. 
0-2. Pop foul to play. Top of the eighth. Concordia with a 2-0 lead. Tornado's a two-spot in the fifth. That's been it. O2, pop foul again. No waste pitch on O2 here. It's going after him. O2, that one driven to left center field, and that's two runs. That's going to tie the ball game. Mason off the third, here's the throw, and he is safe. And a two-run triple. Brings in Amarantos and Thompson. Seven hits now, three in this inning. As Papman to the place, been out been on base twice, double and a walk in three trips. Ball one. Savio had him 0-2, three foul balls by Masonoff, and then the triple to left center field. Bullpen action. Thank you, Leland. Appreciate that. Lefty up in the bullpen. Counting out 2-0 oh to Papman. Right, let us so six, seven, eight coming up for Concordia in the bottom of the eighth. Got to get out of this though. Two and zero or three and zero now. Three and one. Mm. Ball four, so a triple and a walk. Third walk by Concordia pitching. Here's Cortez, Dylan Cortez, 0 for 3. Reach on the fielder's choice in the second. Let me see that bullpen again when you get a second, please, and thank you. Yep, lefty still throwing. Looks like he's ready if needed. Thank you. That one off to play ball one. Uh, seven batters to the plate first time today. That one fouled off. Yep, <clears throat> one and one. We had two outs after three batters with the runner at first and couldn't finish it off. The big hit, of course, Mason off with a two run triple. Tied it up at two. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss, 1-2. and two. And What flusters you is Concordia has 11 hits in this game. They had two after six innings of the seven-inning game earlier today. 1-2, there goes the runner. Strike three, looking. Big strikeout, but they send up seven. They score two runs on three hits and one walk. They leave two. They have left seven runners. But as we go to the bottom of the eighth, we are tied at two here on the Big D Media Network.
All right, you heard Brad as Will Bond comes in, the third pitcher of this game. That's right. This number should be 7 or 07. Will Bond, 101 with a 5.0 ERA, his ninth appearance on relief. He is 1 and 1. <clears throat> Bond, nine innings pitch, 12 hits, five runs, all earned, two walks, and six strikeouts in nine innings. Posing hitters hitting 333 against him as he's ahead of Goins 0 and 2. Goins 1 for 3 in this game. <coughs> that one to the third baseman. Grafe across, and they just get Goins, one down. Excellent running there by Goins, one down. Here's E.J. Sanchez, who is 0 for 3. Looking for a base hit. E.J. E. struck out swinging in the second, popped the first in the fourth, flew out the right in the sixth. Ball one to EJ. Arms on deck. That one popped in the air. Left side. Third baseman coming in. Grafe. Two down. Two down. That'll bring up arms. He is two for three. Uh, I'll, okay. when should I do it now? Yep. Go Thank you, sir. Two down. That's a ball one to arms. Single in the second, single in the fourth, bounce out three and assisted in the sixth. Off speed outside, 2 0. There you go. Oh. That one off the plate, 3 0. Squares the bunt, takes strike one. Three and one to arms. Mm -hmm. Third pitcher on the mound for Yellow Jacket. This is Bonds. That one right up the middle for a base hit. Arms is third hit of the game. Twelfth hit for Concordia. So you get a little two-out magic here in the eighth. As Segrist, two is two for three. Single and a double. Triple would be nice. All right, so you got a single and a double. How about a triple? Ooh, that was the pitch. Swing to miss strike one there. Oh, and one to the Zach man. <clears throat> Six foot, 192 pound sophomore out of Beaumont. Then quickly down, 0 oh and 2. Same two pitches he's gotten them on. Buster Poindexter, hot, hot, hot. And that one. Misses inside, one and two. Two, two, two. 
One, two, outside, two and two. On deck is AG, who is 0 for 4. Two step lead over first base for Arms. Curveball, that one to the third baseman. Up across, and the 5 3 ends it. So Concordia gets a hit, their 12th hit of the game, but they leave them. No runs, a hit, no errors, and one left on. We go to top of the ninth, and it is two to two. It'll be seven, eight, nine for Latorno coming up here. And let's see. Brady Statler in for Concordia. Brady Statler, six foot, 200 pound freshman out of Fredericksburg. Played for the Batlin Billies. He'll pitch the ninth. So Brady comes in, his seventh appearance on relief, 1-0 with a 5.11 ERA, 12.1 innings pitch, 15 hits, seven runs, all earned, three walks, and 10 strikeouts against Brady. He has literally been hot or cold. He has been fantastic, and then he's been shelled. So looking for a good outing here. Ethan Wood been on base twice, a walk and a single in three trips to the plate. Also bounced out 4-3. So Brady Statler starts the inning. Third inning, third pitcher for Concordia now. Strike. One and one. So eight, seven, eight, nine. As Brad said, only one hit between these three guys, and this is the guy at the plate. Let's count now one and two to Ethan Wood. No to high, two and two. Otto Franz threw 108 pitches in 7.2 innings, gave up the two runs, both earned. On six hits, he walked two and struck out eight. He was a victim as V-Hill came in with runners at second and third, and V-Hill gave up a two-run triple. <clears throat> oh, ball four. Bad way to start the inning. Second walk by Wood. That's the fourth walk by Concordia pitchers in this game. V-Hill threw 15 pitches, 15 pitches in a third of an inning. Gave up a hit, a walk, and a strikeout. As Lane Williams, who is 0 for 3 to the plate. <clears throat> nice block by EJ there, ball one. Concordia, same defense. Swift, Segrist, and Huber left to right in the outfield. Arms at third, Goins at short, AG at second, Morrill at first. EJ behind the plate, and now the third pitcher, Brady Statler. On the mound here in the ninth, 2-2 two -two tie. That one passed, arms playing in for a base hit. So a walk and a hit, hit number eight of the game, hit number four in less than two innings for the Yellow Jackets. Here's Grafe, who is 0 for 3.
So looking for a triple play here. EJ with the block ball one. Brady's parents here at the ballpark. His grandparents tuned in as well. Chopper, shortstop. Only plays the first base and safe. He just flat out beat it. Base hit. Infield single, and the bases are loaded with nobody out. Wood the third, Williams the second. Infield comes in. Amarantos. And you can see the bullpen. We got another lefty warming up in the bullpen. Oops. That one fouled off. Count one on one. See the bullpen again. Lefty up in the bullpen for Concordia. Yep. One on one off the plate, two and one now. As you can see, the infielders in. That one pop foul. Kind of evens up two and two. Everybody's standing in the press box here. That one. Base hit the right field. One run coming in. They're going to hold up the second runner. Wood comes in to score. Latorno leads it 3-2. to two. It's been a walk in three consecutive hits. And I believe we're going to have a pitching change. That's now 10 hits for Latorno. That's six in less than two innings. RBI, and by the way, Amarantos has three consecutive hits now. Yep. So the pitching after Otto Franz has just been not up to par. Yeah, no kidding. And pitching change in. New pitcher is Hayden Schrader. And if you heard Coach Mokery in our pregame before game one, Hayden has been doing well for himself and has earned the spot. So let's see if he can come through.
center fielder Dane Jones. So Dane Jones, who is 0 for 3 in this game, including a 5-4-3 double play to face Hayden Schrader. Pitch in there called strike one. <clears throat> Jones 0 for 4, two strikeouts, 5-4-3 double play, and a fly out the center. Oh, one, that one down the line, and that's fair. Oh, my goodness. Nothing you can do on that one. They're going to send in the third runner. That's going to be a bases clearing triple, or d double rather. Three RBI. First, second pitch he sees. Jones brings in Williams, Grafe. And Amarantos. And Concordia now trails it by four. Six to two. <clears throat> Cole Thompson, one for four. Pop foul on the right side, strike one. Well, that's tough for Hayden, too. Nothing you can do there. Quickly 0 and 2 now. Yep, and the Con Concordia jinx in the late innings continues. This is unbelievable. That one chop foul. See, if the Tornadoes had won the first game in eight instead of seven, we would have won this one. And that one, a little flare to center field. That's a base hit. Coming in is Jones. Thompson, his second consecutive hit, picks up the RBI. Jones comes in to score. It's now 7-2, to a five-run ninth inning. Line score 7-12-0 Latorno, 2-12-0 Concordia. Goodness gracious. Foul tip. Seventh hitter of the inning. They did it again. One and one. Chop foul. One and two. A walk, three consecutive singles, a bases clearing double, RBI single. And that one to center field. Segrist will make the grab. And that is the first out of the inning. Six consecutive, one, two, three, four, five consecutive hits and a walk. Cameron Papman has walked his last two times up to the plate. He also has a double and a strikeout. God, that one fouled off. Strike one. What was that before the seventh inning? They sent 16 batters to the plate. And since the sixth, in the seventh, eighth, and here in the ninth, 21 batters to the plate. Five more than they sent in the first six innings, and there's still just one out. That one laced to right center field. That's going to be a base hit. Headed to third is Thompson, and the throw, not in time, and guess what? Pathman over to second on the throw. And the ninth hitter of the inning is Cortez. Dylan Cortez. 
I know. Going to have to extend it. Off the plate, ball one. Cortez. Cortez has struck out three consecutive times after reaching on a fielder's choice. And they're called strike one on one. Five runs on six hits and a walk and counting here in the ninth. Does that one pop on the right side foul? No, oh, Concordia's going to have a much bigger hole to dig out of this time than they did in game one in their last at bat. That one to the shortstop. Over to first. E3. Oh my goodness. And the bloodletting continues on the E3. Second baseman Ethan Wood. Thompson, by the way, scores on that error. Papman at second, Cortez at first, one down. Here's the man who started all this off as Wood, Ethan Wood. And Brad, so much for three guys at the bottom of the order with one hit between them. Yeah, they all got on the bases. God. Oh, and one, the Wood. Oh, and two. thing has gone on so long. Leland's been able to go out and get the outfield camera and come back. And we're still in the same half inning. One and two. All eight runs in the last two innings. Oh, really? And that one to the shortstop. Goins across. Both runners move up. <clears throat> Papman to third. Cortez to second. Two down. Here's Williams had a base hit earlier this inning. He was 0 for 3 coming into the at bat. He has scored a run. Six runs on six hits and an error. Ball one to Williams. Seven. Yep, seven. He went 7.2. Pitch in there, call strike. Goodness gracious. Serious bullpen leakage here. Poor Otto. Great outing, and it will be for naught. That one lifted deep to left field, and Swift with the grab. But not before. Six runs on six hits and an error. Also a walk. They send 11 to the plate. And we go to the bottom of the ninth. Concordia trails it eight. To two.
One, two, three. Top of the order for Concordia. AG, Swift, and Huber do up. And as Brad said, the greatest comeback in, one of the greatest comebacks in Concordia history. That pitch in there called strike one. AG is 0 for 4. Will Bond continues on the mound. Bond now in line for the win. Is that pitch off the plate? One and one. <laughs> uno y uno. On fouled off by AG one and two. Goodness gracious. Wow, serious leakage in the bullpen. And not to pick on the guys, because they've all had great outings this year. They just, nobody had it. So Chopper deep at second. That's going to be an infield hit for A.G. So A.G. on for the first time in this game. Here comes a guy who's... As Leland said, the player of the day for Concordia so far. Julian Swift, two singles, a triple run scored, and then it bounced out 5-3. At that point, he was 5-for-5 five five with a walk. Before the 5-3, they finally got him out in the seventh. Let's see if he can reignite here. It's a curveball misses inside ball one. Concordia is going to need to send about 17 batters to the plate here. Yeah, if Julian could hit a home run, it'll just might take a small dent out of this mess. Yeah. The first of six in the inning. 1-0, definitely. 1-1, considering they hit four all of last year. Have they broke that record this year so far? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've got eight homers this year so far. As a team hitting 270, as that one fouled off. And certainly the team average has gone up in this game as they have 13 hits. On base of 359. Eight homers, 91 RBI. Got him. One down. The line score says it all. Eight runs, 13 hits, no errors for Latorno. Concordia, two runs, the same amount of hits, 13, and one error. Didn't score till the fifth. And by the way, by that time when they scored, finally scored in the fifth run, fifth inning, they had seven hits. Ball one to Huber. Huber been on base three time as a RBI triple, also a single, a walk, and a line out the short. One on one to Sean out of Pearland. The Pearland group say hello to Cindy, who's here in the stands. Goodness gracious! We expect to talk to Coach Carlos after the game. That one chopper. Throw the second for one across the first. Not going to be in time. Good hustle by Huber. Fielder's choice goes 5 4. Two down. Here's Chris Morrow. Here's a guy that can hit a home run. Morrow Dubois. EJ, Arms, and Segrist. Just need home runs out of each one of those guys. We'll be right back in it. Out the pipe, ball one. Mason on deck. He's had a tough, he's had a tough day. You're a funny guy. Having off the plate, 2-0.
How's the weather out there? Nice. And then a call strike. Okay, got to be a little bit more descriptive than nice. Weather. Sunny, 58 okay. degrees. Okay. How, what's it feel like? Does it feel like 58? No, it feels like about 50. 2-1 two, pitch, chop foul, 2-2. Two and two. Wind blowing in favor of Chris going left to right. Yep. That would be a first time in Concordia history. And I wasn't, I've only been here since 2011. How long you been here? Since the next year. Okay. Two and two. Outside, three and two. Oh, that's right, yeah, you were riding my coattails, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the indelible Brad Cone. Three and two, two down. That one a base hit. On his way to third is Huber. Single to right center for Chris Morrow. Two hits in the inning. And Mason Dubois to the plate. Boy, time to break out for Mason B right now. This is a guy who deserves a breakout here. Bond up to 32 pitches in an inning and two thirds. Curb ball inside, strike one. Right. A one pitch, and they're zero and two. That one rip. Oh, and just foul. Oh, and two. That's a little more feasible. Yeah. Oh, two. Strike three. That'll do it. So a doubleheader split. Concordia wins the first game in the bottom of the seventh. And then lose the nightcap. They had a 2 nothing lead after five. Gave up two in the eighth and six in the ninth. Eight to two the final. Eight runs, 13 hits, no errors. Letourneau, two runs, 14 hits, one error for Concordia. Winning pitcher is going to be Will Bond. And Will Bond will move to two and one. And losing pitcher for us. Brady Statler. Brady falls to one and one on the year. God, and this was just ugly. We'll stay around, see if we get Coach Carlos. We'll do some uh, pre-cleaning here. Don't forget, single game tomorrow coming up at noon. But if we'll before we sign off, if we don't get Coach Carlos, we'll come back and Give you kind of a recap and then let you know what's going on tomorrow. So hang with us.
I knew he'd come up. What's up, my man? Good to see you after, uh, what, two weeks, three weeks, yeah. something like that? Do we want to get a camera angle No, it's okay. It's cold. It's cold. <laughs> yeah, it's cold. Coach Carlos joining us here in the booth. And uh, something about the late innings that has just been hampering us this year. I don't know what it is. I'm sure if you knew what it was, we wouldn't have this problem anymore. Well, I know what it is. I'm just not sure that we've figured out. We obviously haven't figured out how to fix it yet. I mean, our bullpen's got to come in and do a better job. I mean, it's pretty simple. We've got to find the guys that can come in and, and you know, stop situations and get us out of situations. And right now, we just, um, you know, we're not consistent with that. So until we can find that guy or a couple of guys, it's going to be tough. And if we're going to continue to, you know, offensively put ourselves in these situations oh, God. and put so much pressure on our starting pitchers, you know, you've seen it before. It's, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's bad. And, um, you know, it, it's exciting to win a game the way we did in the first one, but it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't go out there and do no. it every single game. So, um, you know, we've got a guy, we have to have some guys step up in the bullpen. You know, we're, starting pitchers are doing a great job, but we can't, you know, expect that they're going to go, you know, 100 pitches every time they go out and go seven, eight innings. It's just not realistic either, and that's not going to, it's not going to get us where we want to be at the end. Talk about the offense. I mean, we get two hits and fortunately produced a run that took us to the sixth inning of the game one, which was the seventh inning game. And then we somehow get three hits in the same inning and we win it, as you said, exciting fashion. Then we get nine hits in game two before we even score a run. And we're up 2 nothing going into the eighth and then two in the top of the eighth and six in the top of the ninth. Yeah, I mean, offensively, we're just not putting things together. We, you know, we did a better job of actually swinging it, but we just, you know, we didn't put it together. We're still having a hard time, you know, figuring out how to play our game of, um, you know, bunting and getting, you know, slash and run, hit and run. We're just, we're not having a lot of success with that. And it, it's hard to um, put a finger on it because, I mean, you know, when we're practicing, we're working out. We have got guys that, you know, can do it. We have guys that are known for doing it and it's not getting done right now and you know we, we did see some things swinging wise I mean you know the guys actually changed their approach this, this second game and you saw you know triples and doubles to the opposite gap right you know when you go you know back to back triples with two of the not fastest guys <laughs> on the team but it was it was good to see that we finally even though we've been talking about it non-stop all week because we know the type of pitchers we were going to face. Right. We were going to have to let the ball get deep, go the other way, be patient. And we didn't do that in the first game. We did a better job in the second game, but like I said, we just didn't string them together. And, and then when we're, you know, in situational type of uh, deals, we just didn't get the job done. Now, I know what you said after the first game today. I'm sure that's what you guys told the guys. Hey, you know, you're, you're finding a way to win, but – this is not something that we can continue on during a year. What do you tell them after this game? Um, I mean, it, it's it's looking the mirror time. It's you know, are, are we going to um, you know make these adjustments? Are we going to you know concentrate and and focus on the little things defensively, the things that you know aren't exciting, aren't sexy, but are you know essential to. Uh, playing good baseball and winning ball games and right now we're not playing that you know we're not playing very good baseball and that's um it's hard to um i'm gonna say stomach you know but um yeah you know we just have to again it's just a little bit of soul searching and, and look yourself in the mirror and you know at to a man are you doing your job you know and, and if and if we're having people that just consistently can't then we'll, we'll find somebody that can um but you know it, it's um when you have the, the talent that we have, it's even more frustrating because, you know, we, we've got athletic ability. We've got guys that can play baseball, but right now we don't have nine guys that go out there and play fundamental baseball, and that's, uh, that's a problem. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to digress for a second because I got a chance to talk to Julian's mom between games, and she said that Julian, of course, and I mentioned before the first game, the on-base percentage, which was incredibly low, and she told me that he went to you, apparently, down in Florida and said, what do you see? What is it? 
what am I not doing right? And she said that you saw there was a hitch in his swing, just a small one. And, of course, he went he went five for five with five hits, two triples in there, and they walk in his first six plate appearances today. Made a couple nice plays in the outfield. Did a really good job in the outfield. Seemed to turn around. And she also said that he got an eye exam, and there was something that was wrong there, and they were able to figure something out. <laughs> so, you know, you love you love the attitude of somebody coming saying, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to. Coach, what – what can you what can you tell me? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a guy that just wants to uh, almost to a fault wants to succeed and, and is going to give you everything he has. Gets a little ahead of himself sometimes, but um, you know you take that enthusiasm and you take that that want and that desire, and you know he's he's young. I think he I think he needed to kind of struggle a little bit, you know, because he started off real hot at the first of the season, right. and um, he kind of you know. Went into a little lull. And, yeah, I just saw some little things. I mean, sometimes he just gets a little big and, and you know, then the barrel's dragging through and or, you know, sometimes he coils up. I mean, there's just – everybody's got something at some point, you know, right. that you don't even necessarily feel. And I don't think he felt that. And to, to be able to take that and take it to heart and want to, you know, be successful for the team and yourself, I mean, it's a great thing to have. And, and I'm glad – yeah, he had a great day. I'm glad Huber came in and had a great oh, yeah. day. Um, you know, so Segrist continues to, to oh, play good God. baseball. And then, you know, having him in center field is That's it's like having right two there. guys out yeah. there. It's amazing what he does. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, we, we've got guys that are, that are getting after it. Um, but we just have to, you know, I think sometimes there's that little bit of, um, you know, almost um, – you know, almost arrogance that we have at Concordia that, you know, we're just, we're going to be good. Yeah. And, you know, not understanding the the things that we do talk about, you know, and maybe, we're, you know, maybe part of our responsibility is to figure out another way to, you know, express what we're, what we're trying to get across. But, you know, the easy message is little things matter, fundamentals matter, and that's how we're going to win ball games. All right, man. Well, Enjoy it. Try to enjoy what you have left of the evening. Oh, we'll see you out here for a noon uh, first pitch tomorrow. Yeah, well, that's the great thing about it. We'll come out here and, and, exactly. and see if we can make some changes. And, and I, I feel like we will. And uh, we look forward to seeing you. All right, brother. Thanks, right, man. man. Good to see you, Coach Carlos. Appreciate the time. All right. So there you go. Coach Carlos Concordia splitting the doubleheader, winning 3-2 game one, losing game two, 8-2. to two, As uh, Concordia now. Is five and three in conference play. They fall to twelve and seven overall. And uh, Mr. Leland will pack things up, get ready for tomorrow. Don't forget noon, uh, first pitch tomorrow. Now, what I'm going to do? I've got a. Um, if you remember last year, Tommy Boggs. Of course, you know we miss Tommy for sure. Um, Tommy would always, as as Clint does, never on camera for. A pregame, so there was no use digging up a pregame for Tommy to run tomorrow. But I found a 22-minute piece of video that was aired earlier last year that we're going to run before game two tomorrow, or before the game tomorrow. So you get to see a little blast from the past with Tommy Boggs as uh, it'll be played before um, our pregame. So look for about, let me see. Look for about 11.30 tomorrow. No, actually, let's go 11.20. 11.20 will be on the air tomorrow, and you'll see a 22-minute piece from Tommy Boggs talking. And if you were here last year, you know exactly where where I'm going with that. You'll get a chance to see Tommy and, you know, a little bit of our memory of Tommy. I've got a couple interviews lined up here in two weeks when Concordia comes back. So we'll put together some nice pieces, but we'll start reflecting on Tommy Boggs and everything he meant to the Concordia program. So, all right. Do uh, you have anything final to say before I wrap things up? And you're going to let me wrap things up, right? Of course. It's okay, just, thank it's, you. It's just a heartbreaking loss just to see what happened in the last two innings. But oh, God. Hopefully the coaches would like, as, as Coach said during the interview, that they could figure out what happened and so that they can take the last game and win the series. Yep, that's for sure. And, again, you know, Win two out of three. That's what you're looking to do. You won the first game, apparently, 
did that. But bottom line is you won it, so you got a chance to take two out of three, which is the goal for the weekend. Although that that game two certainly left the sour taste in your mouth. So for Mr. Leland Freeman, our executive producer at Big Daddy Media, for Randy Fry, our QA and president of Big Daddy Media, for Vance Laws and Brad Cohn up here in the press box and everybody out there, I'm Chet Lakata. We say goodnight and bid you adieu from Gardner Boggs Field here on the beautiful campus of Concordia, Texas, or Concordia University in Austin, Texas.